Hey guys, I'm Pat Kelly. Okay, in this problem, they give us a path C, in this case just from 0, 0 to 1, 1. They ask us to parameterize that, and as a second part of the problem, we're also going to evaluate this given integral, okay? So to begin with that parameterization, if it helps draw, this drawing wasn't too involved, but it does help you visualize what's happening with the coordinates, both x and y which is what you want to pay attention to as you're trying to figure out what to write for your parametric equations. I'll talk through that process with this one. So to get started, if I'm going to parameterize this path C, what I want to be thinking of is, as I mentioned, for each coordinate, what's it starting at and what's it ending at? What's happening to that coordinate? So my x coordinate starts at 0 and it ends at 1. So I need to write an expression dependent on t that makes x start at 0 and end at 1. And if it's going to depend on t, you definitely want to have a handle on what t is doing. So I'm going to leave a little bit of space and write down what ends up being like a restricted domain for t. And this is actually your choice, but it's going to make a lot of sense for this problem to let t go from 0 to 1. The reason it's going to make so much sense for this problem with this domain on t is that if I want my x to start at 0 and end at 1 as, zero, as t goes from 0 to 1, let's just make x of t t. Pretty straightforward for this one. You also have to put some thought into what your y coordinate's doing as t runs its stretch from 0 to 1. And for us, the y coordinate is also starting at 0 and ending at 1. So coincidentally for us in this problem, y of t is also going to equal t. For me, that worked out well. In this problem, for any other problem, though, try to follow that same thought process. Just look at each coordinate. Where does it start? Where does it end? How can I write some kind of algebraic expression involving t that's going to make the coordinate do what I want it to do? And you have your choice on these, make them work for you. But check yourself frequently. Plug in those values of t at the beginning, at the end, and see if your x's and y's are doing what you want them to do. Okay, I'm good. That's my answer to the first part of this problem, parameterizing that path. Let's move to the second part of the problem to evaluate this integral. Actually, as a first step, what I'm going to write down is a bit of a formula for this type of integral when we do some kind of integration over that path. And I'll encourage this as a first step for you because the more you write it, the more you're going to know it and have it in your head, but also because it gives you some guidance on what to do in your next few steps. So my first step here, my formula, is that this integral equals the integral from a to b of f of x of t comma y of t, and that's all within your f. Then there's a square root of x prime of t squared plus y prime of t squared. That's neat enough, and that's all under the radical here, and then it's a uh, dt for my integration, okay? So write that out as your first few steps for each problem, and you'll have it in your head mm, just like I did. But then, as I mentioned, it guides you through your next few steps. So to get started, I might even sneak a peek over here and realize that I do need my primes. I need some derivatives. It wouldn't be a calculus problem without. So I'll come over here and just do my x prime of t which for me is just 1, y prime of t, which is also just 1. But those might be different. They will be different for your expressions depending what your parametric equations are. Okay, so just differentiate. Now I move back over here. Switch colors maybe even, because now I'm going to plug some specifics into this formula. My integral from a to b. a to b. Uh, those limits of integration are your t values. So t goes from 0 to 1. I'll make my integral, integral go from 0 to 1. The f of, here's your f right here. Okay, this is my f. 
So what I'm plugging in as my arguments are your x of t and y of t. So the first thing I see is x squared. That would be x of t squared. So I got to look at what my x of t is, which is just t. So this is t squared plus the plus is coming from your function f y squared. And my y coordinate is going to be this y of t. So I look over here, and that's also t. And I'm squaring that because that's what's in the formula, t squared. Put some parentheses around that because you're going to have to multiply all of it by this square root of, let's do some arithmetic on our heads, the x prime we found to be 1 squared, the y prime we found to be 1 squared. So this ends up being square root of 2 dt. And now you're getting back into a, um, an old problem for us, a definite integral. So let's work this out. I'd probably pull that square root of 2 out. Actually, I think I'm going to pull out a 2 as well, right? I combine like terms, so 2t squared. Let's pull the 2 and the radical 2 out of my integral of t squared dt. So I'm looking at 2 radical 2 t cubed over 3 as t runs from 0 to 1, which I didn't write my limits of integration here if I squeeze them in 0 to 1. Now we're plugging in. You got to love your 1s and zeros, right? If I plug in a 1, I'm just getting 1 third. So I'll say 2 times square root of 2 over 3. Subtracting the 0 plugged in, which is 0. So 2 radical 2 over 3 is my answer. Okay? Hope that made sense to you. Practice more on your own. It'll make even more sense.